Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks, to The Hungry Gamer is back with another con recap and lists, because everyone loves lists, right? So I just got back from Gen Con, where I was lucky enough to be able to be there on a press pass, and then also working with Dead Alive Games at their booth from Thursday through Saturday. I had to fly back very early Sunday morning to make sure I got back in time to get to work, well, this morning. And I didn't get to record this video yesterday because my voice was wrecked. It just a lot of getting my voice up over a lot of people doing demos and stuff. And it's a pretty common thing amongst people who are doing demos for a long time. But anyhow, it is now the Monday after Gen Con and I'm recording this and getting this up. Well, as soon as I possibly can. So, first jumping in, Gen Con itself. I'd never been to Gen Con, and I'd always been a little bit wary of going, because I've just heard it's just a crush of humanity, and you can't move, and I was intimidated. I have to admit, I was intimidated. And I have to say that I was very, very, very pleasantly surprised, because it was great. It was just great. Again, they had things set up where the rules were in place for safety, and it was easy to figure out where it was you were supposed to be. I mean, there was lines, certainly, but it was easy to get those things figured out and then, you know, wait in the line. You know, you have to wait in the line. That's the way it goes. But it was easy to do that. Again, I felt like I was safe. It actually wasn't that crowded. I guess there's just so much space in there and the way they have things spread out, it worked really well. So all of that was really great. Again, for the third, fourth big con in a row, it was very much respectful. There's lots of people that I want to play in games with that that didn't want to be wearing masks. And hey, fine, I respect that completely. But they did. And then when we went elsewhere, if we wound up playing something somewhere else, then maybe they'll take theirs off, but no one was being mean or rude if, you know, I decided to keep mine or something like that. So just awesome all around. People understanding, hey, these are the rules. We're going to follow the rules and we're going to be respectful of people who have different comfort levels. That That is all you can ask for. And that was exactly what I got, with one exception. I saw one guy who was being a total jerk about it when an employee of Gen Con told them they needed to have their mask on or they needed to have a mask. They said, oh, I got one. They pulled it out of their pocket and waved it in the employee's face and put it back in their pocket. But my understanding is there's 50,000 people there and one was being a jerk. We'll call it that way. And whether people... However you feel about masks, the way that people were following the rules and doing what was asked of them was just great. Now, moving past the mask thing, talking about the rest of the con. Wow, was it great. Again, spacious, easy to find where you're supposed to go. If you knew the booth number, I often ran around like, oh, I'll just find the place. It'll be right over there. And I'll be wandering forever because I wasn't actually looking at the booth numbers. That's on me, not on Gen Con. But all the stuff around just the games and the vendor hall was fantastic. They had... All of Lucas Oil Field set up as a open play area with a game library. Just unbelievable. Tables, places you could find to play pretty much anywhere you wanted to be. They had performers out there. They had the coolest balloon artist I've ever seen. You can check out that huge, it was almost two stories that dragon made out of balloons. There was this massive card city. And when I say card city, they actually were building buildings out of cards, mostly magic cards, I think, that were just all over. They built it the whole time. It was just incredible. I definitely am going to try to come back to Gen Con next year if I can, because it was just a wonderful experience all around. I just really have no complaints about how it was run. It was just fantastic and so much more fun than I anticipated, because I was kind of anticipating just a crush of humanity and being uncomfortable, but it really wasn't. So just awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, moving into the things that I actually did there. Just like I did with Origins, I want to give you the top five moments that I had from Gen Con and then my top five games of Gen Con that I'm most excited about. So starting with the moments, I will start with running demos for Lunar Rush for Dead Alive games. Lunar Rush right back there. And I wasn't running the actual games. Every now and then I tap in and I, I do that for a little bit. Mostly I was at the edge of the booth as people walked by, I would give them the rundown of what the game is and then see if I could get them to sign up for the email list so that we can tell them when the game's launched or maybe get them into a demo later on. And man, did I have a good time. Now, if you know me, you know I like to perform. 
and I can be a bit of a character, I'll say it like that. And so what I quickly realized was there are so many amazing things at Chenka, so many things you can look at. And Lunar Rush is still a prototype. And so it's not the most exciting thing to look at right now. Plus, it's a, it's a Euro game. It's not miniatures everywhere. And you know, people walk by at a glance, and I'd say, oh, you're interested in le learning about this? They'd say, nah. Or maybe some people would stay, and they'd, they'd learn. And when I tell them about the gameplay, they'd be all into it. They'd be very excited about it, really interested. But it's getting that crowd. So very early on, I turned it into almost a carnival barker type thing that I was doing. Other, it's not like I'm the first one. There's other people do this. And... It became a performance, a, about a 10, 15 minute act that I would do, getting people over and both explaining the game to them and then trying to get them to laugh on the way because the truth be told is, this game's mechanics are good enough, I think, that if you like Euro games, you learn the mechanics, you're interested. But when you have all this stuff going on, you gotta pull people in. And I like to pretend that I'm pretty funny sometimes when I think about it. So I had a little bit of a comedy act that I was doing. So explaining the game, playing up a little bit of the underlying satire of the game and those kinds of things. But here's the point. My best moment was there was one time a couple guys came by and they were looking. I was like, hey, can I, can I tell you about the game? And the guy's like, I don't know. No, I don't think so. I've had a lot of demos. not really interested. And I just said to him, I said, this will be the best demo presentation you have had all weekend, I promise you. And that got him, he was like, okay, let's go. You know, he wasn't mean about it, he was a very nice, lovely person, but just very much, okay, yeah, okay, buddy, let's find out. We're going through, I had him laughing. Then after that two, he's like, I'll give you two minutes. After that two minutes pass, he's still there. And we're going through, we're going through, and we get to the end, I was like, and, was it the best demo? And I see, he was like, yeah, it was. I was like, you wanna go sign up? He's like, yeah, I do. And when I, and I just, it made me so happy because I got to combine these things that I love. I was performing, I was making people laugh, and introducing people to this game that's legitimately good. So, loved all of that. Anyway, that's number five. Number four was the, for the first time ever, as a media member, there were swag bags. And there's a whole bunch of them. I got one from Corvus Belly that had a miniature in it and a little squishy Aristea dice and some uh, some other things that was very cool. There was one from AEG that had some little chocolate coins and this cool little wooden box and uh, some games in there and a pass to their game night. And again, a bunch of cool stuff going on in there. And there was Sovereignty with a really cool tumbler for hot drinks, I guess, or cold drinks. Very, very cool. And a, some nice tea and a little tea ball to put things in. But... The coolest thing was the Lego Man that Sovereignty made for me. And I'm going to tell you now, Sovereignty swag bag was not the number one. And that's and it, I got this thing, which is my favorite thing I got the whole time. So they made a Hungry Gamer Lego Man. I'm going to hold this up for you right here. You can see it right there. Got a little pie. Hungry Gamer. And I just love it. It's one of the coolest things I've ever been given in my life. And far and away, the best thing, individual thing, that came in these swag bags that I got. But the coup de grace goes to Chip Theory Games for the things that were in their swag bag. So first off, there was some coffee right here. In fact, both types of their coffee, which in, is pretty good coffee, I got to say. Like, I, I got some for Mark Dainty of Not Board Gaming and... Uh, I had some of it, but very, very, it's, it's tasty coffee. I'm very excited to actually take some of this to school so I have it there. But that's not all. There's more. There was also this lovely pint glass with a cool little tantrum art on there. And there was actually, well, there's actually two of them, but original Don came with me to that little demo session, so I sent him home with one too. But very cool pint glass. Okay, still, you know, cool, but not amazing. Then... This Gilly plushie, and I have to point out, it comes with a uh, ability you can use in the game, which I find completely adorable. Right there, get rid of your sadness points. And I'll also say that this Gilly right here, this is actually what Gilly from Chip Theory looks like. The whole persona of him looking like an actual person that he has on Facebook, nope, not it. he actually looks like this. He popped in while I was doing a session. So again, very cool little, little gear lock Gilly plushie here, but that's not it. If that's all there was, the Sovereignty one takes the cake. But in a way that only Chip Theory games can do, when it comes to overproducing stuff, they gave us some coasters. 
And these things are crazy pants overproduced. First, they come in the lovely little box. Okay, well, things come in boxes, right? But it's a magnetic box. Okay, magnetic box. And we look on the back. Not only does it have four Gearlock -like coasters in there, it comes with a, a, a neoprene battle mat. Okay, fine, whatever. So you open it up, and oh, here's here's the battle mat. It's edge stitched. In other words, it's another coaster, but it's an edge stitched neoprene coaster. And then look at these ridiculous, and by ridiculous I mean wonderful coasters, which are just ginormous, too many bones character chips. So best thing in the swag bag, the Lego. Best overall swag bag, I think, goes to Chip Theory Games. But all in all, I'd never been to a con that had swag bags, so that was just really cool all around and really fun, and I just I really enjoyed the whole whole experience as far as that goes. Now, number three, we're gonna pick up the pace here a little bit. I know this video is already going long. Number three was I got to play two games of Monasterium, twice with Original Don, and then once with Original Don and his son, Adrian, the co-designer of Backyard Chickens, and the other time with Original Don and Skippy, the designer of Lunar Rush. And it's just a really enjoyable game. I really like it. Both times that we played, it was just lots of laughs and lots of fun. It's just really, really a good memory for me. Then coming to number two was coloring. Yep, coloring. I did a little... Sovereignty had asked me if I was willing to do some kind of event for them that wasn't necessarily doing a game on the Sovereignty platform while I was there. And Sovereignty being my digital overlord, I of course said yes. And so I didn't know what to do. And one of the things that Danny suggested was, I don't know, but maybe you can do some coloring of the board game dog. I was like, okay. And so I sent her some pictures and she got this other bit of artwork and we just did a coloring session. And it was the... First day of the con proper, but it was the second day for me. I'd already been there doing a lot of setup and stuff. And boy, that first morning was exhausting doing the demos and stuff. And that's when I sat down. And it was just so lovely to sit and not talk. We talk a little bit, but not really talk a lot. And just color. And look at this amazing Beatrice the Board Game Dog piece of artwork I have now. Right? Just awesome. And unfortunately for Sovereignty, this is now twice that they are the bridesmaid, not the bride. Because the number one moment for me was from Shadowborn Games, the makers of Oathsworn. Now, you may or may not know that I backed Oathsworn, and I'm still waiting for it. I'm very excited about it. I've just I've watched a few of the playthrough videos that are out there, and I've read all the rules, and watched the tutorials, and I'm just super excited for this game, and I just know in the depths of my soul that my copy is going to be the last one that ships. But whatever, I'm being patient. But I made my way over to the Shadowborn booth, and they were doing demos, and I think there was the ability every morning you could pre-order some uh, some copies of the, that they're going to ship out after backers get their theirs delivered, or something like that. So I made my way over there, and I just wanted to chat with them for a bit, and just fanboy, I guess, just wanted to basically say, I'm super excited about this game. I can't wait for it. And I didn't try to demo, I didn't, I mean, I already I bought a copy, so I'm not trying to get a copy. But I did get there, and I did have one mission. And I figured it was a no. It wasn't going to happen. I went over, and I was talking to them, and I told Jamie there, I said, you know, I'm super excited for this whenever it comes. I just, yeah, I'm just so excited. But I have one regret about my backing. And I know a lot of people were disappointed that they didn't get the extra armory, where you can take the arms off of the minis and actually have them armed exactly as they are and it changes throughout the game that's not it and some people were disappointed that they didn't get the, the extra terrain minis nope that's i wasn't disappointed about that some people were disappointed they didn't get the monster minis because the core game comes with standees and actual minis for the characters nope that's not it. what i'm disappointed was and i told him i said i have one regret that i didn't buy the coins i don't know why i didn't i just didn't i didn't buy the metal coins so I asked, I went there, got kind of hat in hand, we chatted for a bit, and I said, you don't have any coins here for sale, do you? And the answer was no, he didn't. But then, in a moment of just pure kindness, he said, but you know what? If you come back on Sunday at 4 o'clock, we're packing up, you can take the coins we've been demoing with, because we have more at home. 
But of course, as I mentioned earlier, I left at 4 a.m. Or excuse me, 5 a.m. on Sunday. But Original Don showed up as the hero I needed. And he was able to go there and they were happily just, you know, here, here you go. And now, only like 30 miles away, I have my Oathsworn coins. I don't have the game yet, but I have the coins. And I'm so excited for those coins. I'm so excited for this game. I wish I had it now, but I don't. It's coming. And it was just awesome. One, that they weren't jerks because that would have ruined my life. But two, they were so generous as to send me home or send Don home to give to me these coins. I'm so excited about some coins. And there they are. I only have that picture on my phone. That's all I have. I don't have the coins yet, but there they are. Now, enough about my nonsense and rehashing my fun times. You're probably here for the top five games from Gen Con. And as I usually try to do, I do have two honorable mentions. And the first one is from AEG called Ready, Set, Bet. And this is a, a horse racing game, except you're not actually racing the horses, you're just betting on them in real time. And it plays two to nine players. And I was like, this is crazy pants. I don't know what you're talking about. And what happens is one person just runs the race, which is they roll two dice and whatever number they roll, that's the horse that gets closer to the finish line. And there's different things to keep the rate of who's going to win more uh, even where, you know, if you roll a six twice in a row, six actually gets a little boost. But what you're doing is you're playing and you're just, you're placing bets in real time as it's going. One horse gets it. Oh, I'm going to place a bet on that one to win or that one to show or that one to place or do some of the prop bets or whatever it is. And it's a game that when they described it to me, I thought in my head, that sounds dumb as crap. But John D. Clare designed it and John D. Clare was there. And I was like, okay. And they wanted to run a couple races. And I'll be damned if that was not intensely fun. Now, I didn't play a full game. I didn't play enough to really have a full vibe of how it's going to end, how it's going to play. But man, it really was far more fun than I thought it was going to be. And so definitely deserves an honorable mention on this list because I can totally see this being like a gamer's party game. And then the other one comes from Breaking Games, and that is Asking for Troubles. And original Don and I, we actually went and sat down with Chris Strain, and we got, got to play a game, just the base box. And what a lovely game. It is a very light worker placement where there's no blocking. You can bump people, they get bonuses, maybe you don't want to, and you're collecting the troubles, which are kind of like tribbles, and you don't like them. The only way you can get rid of them is if you get them and you throw them into the sun, which is just, it's just silly and funny and nice, and sweet, and cute, and weird, and just everything that I like in games, this game is. So really enjoy playing that. It only comes an honorable mention because there's some expansions that I think are really gonna make it pop, but I haven't got to try those yet. And so I'm excited to play those and see how it works because the expansions add a little bit of meat, and I think that little bit of meat is just what this game needs. But again, really excited about it. Now, into the actual games. So number five comes in at number five only because I only got a brief descriptor of it, but I'm super excited about it. I'm excited about the way it looks, and I'm excited about the gameplay and all of that, and that is called Weirdwood Manor. And this is a cooperative game that uses time, it's not time travel necessarily, but as you're moving through the game, you're going to be using abilities that are used at certain times of day. And so that's going to advance the day as you're going through. And as you're doing that, you're actually rotating the board around, as you can see up there, it actually rotates around. It's cooperative different abilities and your different monsters that you're dealing with, different cards that you have. And again, I don't know, I can't explain a ton about it because I didn't actually get to play it, just talk about it. But it's stuck in my brains, living there rent free right now, and I'm just super excited to learn and play more. I, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to wrangle a prototype for it. That's how excited I am. Actually, who am I kidding? Anything in this top five, if it's not already out, I'm super excited to try to maybe get a prototype of it. Now, the next one is at number four is the new Wander Cult of Barnacle Bay called Le Clux Revenge. And it's again, it is Barnacle Bay, but it's adding some new stuff. It's adding new pirates to it and the great ghost pirate Le Cluck. And if you are familiar with Monkey Island, you know what that's a riff on. And you have some new characters, new loot, new bad guys, new monsters. You can set things on fire, which is a new thing. You can get, put yourself in cannons and shoot yourself out of cannons and shoot like all the things that I love about the original Wander. It's adding bits more to and more story and the minis look great and all of that. So 
Number four, Wander, The Cult of Barnacle Bay. Very excited for that one to hit Kickstarter and to come out. Love, love, love that game. I, I just adore that game. It's one of the only dungeon crawlers that I've actually played through the entire campaign more than once, not just doing one-offs. Now, number three is another one that I didn't get to play a lot. I got to play just a few rounds of the combat, and that is coming to Kickstarter very, very soon. It may already be on Kickstarter by the time this video posts, and that is the Kinfire Chronicles. And in some ways, this reminds me favorably of Familiar Tales. Not because it plays like it, but just with the depth of story and character building that I'm getting from it. And in Kinfire Chronicles, it's an adventure game, you're playing through your story, you're, but the art is very good, and as you're doing your combat, you're playing cards, and you can play cards on other people's turns to give them boosts, and all those normal dungeon crawler things. But what really excites me about this is how well you get to know the characters. And it's crazy. I was playing a, a rogue type character, and I was just reading through the flavor text on the cards. I read one, and I was like, oh, Someone hurt her. Like this character, she's hurt because it's this super dark, dark thing that was said in there. But then, and it gave me one impression of this character. So, wow, character is dark, maybe a little bit sadistic. I don't know what's going on. Like, that's kind of creepy, kind of fun, but kind of creepy. But then I read another card later and I was like, oh my gosh, no wonder she's like that because this other thing has happened and we're just talking two sentences and I'm already feeling for this character. The art is great. I'm not going to spoil anything about the story or anything like that, but the, the little bits of story I got, very interesting. The bits of branching narrative that you can do, very interesting. It's not hugely branching, but it is a little bit branching. Very, very interesting. Character design, awesome. All these things. Very excited about Kinfire Chronicles, and I'm going to get to do some demos on TTS, and I'll get some kind of video up as soon as I can about that after I've got to play a at least a couple of times. It'll be more of a first impressions, but I want to be able to share that with you. So Kinfire Chronicles, very, very cool. Now we come to number two. And again, I didn't get to do a huge demo of this. Again, just a short half hour demo. And this is one that I'm very excited about. I do have a prototype coming eventually, and that is War Crow Adventures from Corvus Belly. Now I am on record as really enjoying Infinity Defiance right behind me. It has a few issues with rules and all that stuff. But now they have this War Crow Adventures coming out, and I'm really... It's a dungeon crawl, and it's an app-integrated dungeon crawl. So the app's going to hold all the story. It's going to tell you how to set up your board, what tiles to put in which place, when to add things, what goes where, what monsters to put out. It's going to control the monster's AI, and the monster's AI is very simple. It's, you know, they if they're in this range, they do this, this range, they do this. Normal, normal stuff there. And similar to Infinity Defiance... You're using this system where you're rolling dice, and it has the hits and the switches, whereas you, if you get the right combination, you activate abilities. But it also adds something to it where it has these half successes, a half exclamation. So if you have two of them, it counts as one. Or in skill checks, if you are a master of that, so that the dwarf fighter has the mastery on strength, so it, if you get the half success on that, then it just counts. But... Whatever, all that, that, that's infinity defiance that I'm striving to with the, you know, the half thing on there. And they use D8s, that's different, they use D8s. What really intrigues me is the action selection and the initiative. Because you have three cubes, I don't know if you'll be able to get more, and each, when it's your turn, you can fill out these boxes on your character card. And once you fill the highlighted part up completely, that is the ability that you, you will get to do an attack, and you get to take whatever abilities that you covered. So you can take one that lets you do a lot of stuff, but you only get one attack, or you can do a bunch of smaller things and get multiple attacks. And as you do this, you're moving yourself around this initiative wheel. And again, depending on what it is that you're doing, you might be able to make yourself activate multiple times in the round, depending on what actions you actually take. And it's just fascinating. And that's a terrible description, so you'll have to watch the video when I come out with it to really see more about it, but it's just fascinating. And I'm so intrigued by it. You know, Chuck and Dice is good. I still love the Switches system, the little mini game that you're playing, but this action selection and the way the initiative works is awesome. It's just awesome. I really can't wait to dive into it and to see where that goes. And a little bit of story I had, I thought it was pretty well written. There's going to be a little bit of work for the translation as it, as it goes through, I know, but just really, really 
cool. But that's only number two. Number one, and I guess they get a prize because they've come in number one on two different things I've mentioned, and that is Hoplomachus Victorum from Chip Theory Games. Now, this is one that I was sent the TTS like two days before the campaign started, and just a you said, I told them I was interested in checking it out, and they sent me that, and I just couldn't get to it. And Hoplomachus itself isn't something that I ever got into. I love Too Many Bones so much, and I like Burn Cycle, and I like Cloud Spire, all that, but Hoplomachus just never did it for me. But this solo-only one, I got to go, I played it with Original Don, we just kind of teamed up together, and it was just awesome. It has this, again, you're moving around the map like you doing too many bones, except it's not linear. You kind of go wherever you want, and you're fighting these champions on these different continents. But as you're moving through the different areas, you're choosing what you're going to do. Are you doing a fight to the death type thing, where your units that you have with you, because you have units that come with you each time, where they die permanently? Are you doing a sporting event where your hero can get hurt, but for the most part, death isn't permanent? Are you doing other kinds of events? It's just very, very cool. But the combat itself... It's great. It's just fantastic. Everything they've done, I'm not going to say it's streamlined, because it's still Chip Theory Games, and there's a lot. It's a two-sided, full page of different keywords that you can use. They love their keywords at Too Many Bones, excuse me, at Chip Theory Games. But it was just great. The dice rolling and the way you're using the abilities of your leader to try to boost your minions, but at the same time trying to make sure that you get your hero out at the exact right time because you're spawning them each round and trying to counter what the bad guys are doing and leveling yourself up as you go, making yourself stronger and getting the right kinds of chips in and trying not to get yourself knocked out or killed because you lose a blessing, you lose too many blessings, you get all these bonuses are given to the end boss that you're fighting, and the end boss fight that we did was so very hard. We, we hit time, so we had to go, and we and we feel like we won. We got to claim a moral victory, but no, we really didn't. And it just is wonderful. I just, it's really good. And it's solo only, but man, it just really shocked me. And I'm super excited that eventually I have a copy of this coming when it's being delivered, but it's a wonderful game, especially if you are into solo play. And again, Don and I, we played together, and we just kind of shared stuff and made decisions together, which was also very, very satisfying. And it was just great. And a special shout-out to our demoer. And, and I'm so sorry, I, I, I've forgotten his name, who was... And he was a kind of a last-minute fill-in for the designer. And it was a fantastic demo. Just so good. He put up with my nonsense. He answered Don's questions. He answered my questions. He made me laugh. He put it, He put us through our paces. He gave us advice at just the right times. And it, it was all around wonderful. And it claims the top spot because one, that experience was so good. And it was also a long session. We got to play pretty much a whole game, so I really got to dig deep into it. And whereas the other games, I didn't get to play f through a full game. I just got little bits and pieces so I could be excited about, but this one I know is very good, and I'm super excited for it to come. So, there you have it, folks. That is my Gen Con recap, top games of Gen Con, top moments of Gen Con. I had a great time. I hope they will welcome me back again next year. And as always, let me know down in the comments what your top games of Gen Con were. The last thing I'll just mention is I'm very surprised that this is all, all of my top five this time are adventure dungeon crawl games. And it's been a while since I had one that really excited me. I have Stars of Karyos that just showed up. I'm very, very excited about that still. And you know, I have Madara, but that's now old, old news now. I have, I, there's been ones I've been playing with the exception of Stars of Karyos. They're all old ones and I just haven't, been grabbed and excited by any. It's just been Euro game, Euro game, Euro game that I've been into lately. But man, I'm excited about all five of these. Exceedingly excited about all five of these. That didn't even count Oathsworn that I've already gone on about. So anyhow, there you have it, folks. That is my recap. Again, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.